my name is Khalis Khalil Pa'a and we're here at Ala Moana Beach Park to celebrate Uncle China's like, in, like inspiring life today with all of his friends and family and this is what he did the best was bring everybody together to have a good time and I think there's no better way to send him off than to be surrounded by the people who loved him the most. Aloha! <laughs> today. Uh, first up, I'd like to bring up Pastor John Miller. Uh, Pastor John is from the Walking Wadua Community Church, and he'd like to say some things and open with the pule for us. I pray that you be with the family today, that they will bring strength from hearing the stories and seeing the laughter, and you will have compassion and mercy on the morning. May your face shine upon us. May your mercy and grace and compassion be with us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Of his life. This is Pastor Roy speaking again. I had the privilege of meeting Roy when he first began the celebrate recovery in Wahiwa. I am grateful to have been one of his pastor's <coughs> friends and for the opportunity to watch him grow in his relationship with Jesus. I will always remember his heart of love and consideration for others. He was old school, and he knew it, and so did everyone else. We would often kid about how he was Akamai and humble. It was true because he was smart and humble. It was a great joy to see him, the joy that entered into his life when he received Jesus as his Lord and Savior. It was clear the three most important things in his life were his kids and grandkids, his extended Ohana and Jesus. He had something good he wanted everyone to have. I know that continues to be his heart today, that folks would come to know Jesus. He once told me he met Jesus, and now he's free. I met, uh, I know him as China. met China three or four years ago. He walked into the Hawaii, walked me to Church of Nazarene, celebrate recovery. He came downstairs and he did this. <laughs> I don't believe in this God thing you're all talking about. <laughs> but I'll listen. And he listened and he kept coming back. And I, I think it was like the fourth or fifth or sixth week, he said, he went from this. He said, you guys are messed up like me, but you're happy. <laughs> I want to know more about what's going on. So we had a lesson that talked about receiving Jesus Christ and how he can free you from your past and give you a new life. And one day after the meeting, he went out in the parking lot and Brother John Smith led him to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And I said, China, you need to get baptized. He said, I like water, let's do it. So we went down to the North Shore, he got baptized, and he started preaching. Many times in ministry and church, we want to quit doing the things we're doing. But when you see the power of a changed life and a changed man, it's miraculous. I didn't know him before. I didn't know when he came in who he was. I found out later. Wow, ah, can I get your autograph? China was on a mission. Many of you may not know that he had his life transformed, but he was on a mission. And he went out and he taught a lot of people how to know Jesus. And I'm sure he's up in heaven. They're having a big surf contest up there with 100, 200 foot waves. And he's teaching the angels how to surf. I want you to laugh, cry, be ornery like China, hug the family, cry. With, it's okay to cry means we're human beings. Jesus wept. So cry, fellowship. God bless you and have a great day. Thank you, Pastor John. That was a great testimony. Uh, next up, we'd like to call... Actually, it's me, sorry. <laughs> 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 okay, so 
Um, I'm here to read Uncle China's eulogy, and a really beautiful thing about this eulogy is actually a lot of it he wrote himself. Um, he spent a lot of time reflecting on his life, his past, his blessings, and um, it's a real pleasure to be able to read this. Roy China Isamu Emura was born on December 12th, 1954, at Triple Hospital in Honolulu, Hawaii. His parents were Rachel and Mitsuo Uemura. He was the third of four children, Naomi, Clyde, China, and Nelson. He attended Kuhio Elementary and Washington Intermediate School, where he graduated from Kaimuki High School in 1972. Uncle China was married twice and had three children from his first marriage, Leolani Aloha, who passed away as a baby, Kanoe Lani, and Kikoa. He is survived by his younger brother Nelson and his wife Donna, his children Kanoe Lani and husband Justin, Kekoa and his wife Carissa, and his grandchildren Cade, Emery, Loli, and Kaya. Growing up, Uncle China's sister Naomi helped raise him while his mom was away working. His dad was on a deployment in Germany during this time. Naomi passed away when he was 12 years old and that forever changed his life. The family moved to Mo'ili'ili, Ili, where Uncle China would roam the streets with his friends and just did his own thing. He started pipe boarding at Walls, then he learned to longboard at Queens and slowly surfed all the breaks from Queens to Big Rights. And he never left. He was a true blue Big Rights guy and proud of that spot. Uncle China loved traveling. He traveled on the longboard professional tour he toured with Uncle Reynolds, Auntie Rel, Uncle Kiyoki, and Uncle Buff. He was grateful to Uncle Craig Sugihara and Tana Country Surf for being his original sponsor throughout life. In the late 70s, Uncle China was a guiding force in starting the Honolulu Longboard Surfing Association and hosts a club at Ships Galley. In 1983, he started China Uemura's annual Longboard Surfing Classic which took place at Kuhio Beach and ran for over 34 years. He donated the proceeds to charities like Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Hawaii, Shriners Children Hospital of Hawaii, and the American Cancer Society. Over the years, his contest drew participants from all over the world. One fun fact about Uncle China's contest was, if you play sixth, you went home with the best prizes. <laughs> Uncle China's, Uncle China's contest was also known for rewarding students for their academic e excellence by rewarding them with a brand new surfboard. In 1996, he started the annual Wahine Surfing Classic, which benefited the Kapiolani Medical Center for Women and Children and the Sex Abuse Treatment Center. The Wahine contest ran for 30 years. That year, he also won the Edi Kao Waterman of the Year Award. Uncle China worked at many local businesses like Fiberglass Works, where he managed and packed the boards. It was said that he was the best board packer around. He also worked at First Break Surf Shop, Pub Yashinoki, Hoi Street Cafe, Magic Island Productions with the craft services. He also did security for surf contests on the South Shore. He worked with Auntie Myra at the City and County Parks and Rec. And he was also the warehouse manager for 808 Fire Protection. <laughs> Uncle China enjoyed teaching stand-up paddle lessons for free at, here at Alamoana Beach Park. For three years, Uncle China also held his annual Popio Fishing Tournament for, um, for his friends, and everyone caught a good time. In 2011, he started China Urmura Surfing Foundation, and his model was it's all about the kids surfing and making their dreams come true. Through his foundation, he helps support young surfers to cover their contest fees and travel expenses. Uncle China was inducted into the Duke Kahano Moku Hawaiian Waterman Hall of Fame in 2013 for being a longboard and stand-up paddle legend. In 2019, he moved to Wahiwa where he lived with Kanoi and her family. He connected with Celebrate Recovery and New Hope Wahewa. On December 1st, 2019, he got baptized. And God changed his life. In the last years of his life, he found joy in gardening, 
and taking care of his fish. Uncle China passed away peacefully at home on January 6, 2023, where he's surrounded by his family and friends. We share the words written by Uncle China himself. Bottom out, when you hit rock bottom, seek God. Your life will change for good. He forgives whatever you've done in life. All you gotta do is believe. China Wei Murang. Love you, Uncle China. Um, next up, we have uh, Uncle Wendo Oyaramori. Hello, everybody. Hello. 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 You know, I hope I don't choke. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <Shut>. <laughs> okay, anyway, first thing, I'm representing Hong Kong Bar Association. I speak. Yeah. It was in the late 70s, I think, yeah? And uh, he went on tour, Longboard surf. he was young. And he come back, he tell me, well, no, we win, you know, let us, you know, everybody all happy. And I think it was like about three years he was doing this, and one of the brothers, Peanuts, went with him, Reynolds was like, all these guys, right? We was a wild bunch now. And what it was, was all the guys that surf over here, big rides, concession, cogs, and there was all these cliques. You know, not everybody got along with each other too. And about 30 something guys, and we made the club in 1984. We had the first meet. The club at, the club had to go to Waikiki Beach for for 30 in the morning, make the stage, the tents. You know, we had to do everything. He had the best entertainment. And then you know what, we had to pass the whole thing down, <laughs> put them on the side, and next morning, four o'clock, we had to put them back up. <laughs> <laughs> but after all, I think that popular, shall I say, uh, yeah, professional guys doing this stuff, you know. That's all well. And then, you know, his surf meets was just going on and he lasted for 34 years. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's what he did for the Wahinis. When, uh, the Queen of Makaha, Rella, son, came down to surf the tournament. Yeah. And she was a legend already. Come check out, whatever. Yeah. And then, you know, the years go by, and who pops out? The small, howly looking Hawaiian, Kuri Samoa. But you see, what I like to see to her, and all the kids, the many who needs and all that, and the mothers and fathers, bring them, bring them down, and they're all excited. They win one surfboard, one trophy, and kind of like a couple of big tiny country bags with all the goodies inside. They're all happy. And that's what I thought was something else. So, and all these kids today, they are big now, yeah. But I know that uh, they all respect and love Uncle China. So I got a big hand for that one. China was a guy that made the first celebration of life among the brotherhood and have the paddle out. Yeah. Because uh, the guy, uh, Brother Nelson Higa with Marke, and we like to make something. So we talk to the parents, all that stuff, and try to talk to the mother and father. Then we take, he take the lead, 
we make meeting or oh, this is what we gotta do and it, it happened and it was like unreal you know and then brother Langs would die and uh we did the same thing in China talk to the parents and we get the meeting and this is what we're gonna do and that one I swear I had about 300 people today we get 500 people here the biggest ever this doesn't happen at Alamona Beach you see well, it started from back then, and all these dead, like everybody, was, everybody was so important at the time. Lang's brother, Shad, had bought this small three feet tree, about three feet tall, the tree branches on top, and we're going to plant them. We're going to plant the tree for Lang's. So everybody in the club, because he would bring the kind of uh, food on Hawaiian wood and hoho. So everybody would take turn and make the puka. And then uh, put the tree. And as a tree, well, you see how big the tree now, but that became the memorial tree, Lang's memorial tree. They put one black up there, Lang's and Nelson. But then everybody else started dying. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And you know, this is sad too because we were still young. You know, in the 40s and that, the guy like that. And Brother Reed, Maki, Brother Buzz, Maki, Bobby Mendoka, Maki. Until today, everybody, you know, so much we losing. And as, as of today, in my count, we get 24 spirits in that tree, the mother tree, okay? And the most recent, go back a year or so, was Makosaka, uh, Andy, Hans Kane, Sister Tammy, Tamura, Brother Sao, Akao, and Brother uh, Sydney again. Uh, and China now could join the guys. So that's 24 people. And every and the, the tree is 21 years old today. And every year, it's been 21 years that we all gather at that tree on the marathon day and have a blessing. All those that pass, and we do it until today. The club, which is getting smaller, but we get friends, club friends, and you know we have enough people. Have, from very good pot lock and shit, the, the blessing. Yeah. So I like to um, recognize him for being the leader and comforting the families and the friends, the relative of the person, and put, and put out the celebration of life. Because not not everybody can do that. So I thought it was. That was one of his greatness, Hayes Aloha, that he would share to the family and they, they meet their family and stuff. So I like got a big hand for that one. <laughs> we were the party guys. We went to hundreds of parties. We, China, we make parties. Okay? We had hundreds of them. And then we had picnics over here with all the Ohana. Because our kids got to meet everybody else's kids. Let's have a hand for China's parties. Yeah. It's the last thing I like to say. <laughs> I just like um make one Hawaiian salute for brother. You know? So I like everybody stand up and face the tree. <laughs> and uh, just repeat after me. Imoa. Imoa. Mukahi. Mukahi. Onipa. Onipa. Ea, ea. Ea, ea. Aloha, brother China. Aloha.
Next up, could we have Uncle Manny and Dwayne Di Soto come up and share a few words? Thank you. Aloha, aloha, Viaka. All right, China. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna take this thing back to the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> I came from Waianae when Levi Stanley was playing football at University of Hawaii already. So I went. I got I got picked by Larry Price to go to over there too, and so we ended up. Uh, me and Levi, and we were still brothers from Waianae, you know. Uh, at, and to tell you the truth, I met China to Levi Stanley. Uh, it was at Varsity Avenue, right across uh, Varsity Theater, by Blue Goose. You guys know where Blue Goose is. Come on. <laughs> we used to run that place. You know that, right? <laughs> hey, you guys gonna act like that, you know? <laughs> so, so anyway, Levi and China was living upstairs, and me and Colton Song, who my brother just, uh, we left him to go, go to, uh, to God about three weeks ago also, Colton Song. So we went upstairs, I uh, finally um, met China, and Eddie Aikawa was there with uh, Levi. He was still trying to, like, what girl he would try to check out, yeah? <laughs> Yes, can relate to him, you know. That's my brother now. He's married, the wife is bigger than him, so just calm down. <laughs> but anyway, we met China. I met China. And then uh, yeah, I know Eddie and everything, and then China come up, comes up to me and say, How's your brother, Manny? My name, my name, China, uh, China from Japan. <laughs> is that serious or what? And you know, right there, I felt one kinship. Porgies, <laughs> wallabies. You know that. You know, but it was it was like around 1976, 77, like that. China showed me where to go, where all the Japanese hang out. So I felt real, real, real. You know, like accepted to Queen Sir, <laughs> Publix, the Aoi Canal. I had the local knowledge, and he was from Kai Muki. I love China, Roy Uimura. And uh, he, uh, he, when I, we didn't have the football season going on, he took me to a lot of the places to surf. Big Rice is one of them. And I go, wow, China, over here is good. Yeah, man, but you see these guys, I don't like them around here. So what you like me to do? <laughs> I don't like to say anything that will incriminate me right, right now, you know. But I gotta tell you guys on the story, and this thing is real close. We have this Buffalo Carolina Surf Classic that's been running for 40 something years. So China was known all over except Makaha, because he never come and surf buffaloes. And only the best comes to Buffalo Surf Club, I mean contest, okay? So he started, I said, come on China, let's go. So the first year he goes, now you, you guys well know Buffalo is not off the lip, curl like that. You gotta do tricks, so in other words, you gotta think while you're surfing. That is hard for us Kanakas. <laughs> right there, it's like, you know, you, you, it's a really uh, burden already. So, and guess what? China, you only hang around Kanakas, right? So he goes to my car and go, China, just go out there, you gotta do the Allen Ranch, the Uncle Grant's, the coffin, all this. He goes, what? <laughs> No, that's only half. Let me tell you the rest. <laughs> so he goes out. He serves. He waiting. The, the horn blows. He don't catch one wave. First year. He said, "Man, what? What? I don't know what for, what for do. I said, "This too. What I told you for do? I was trying to think, and I missed the wave." <laughs> so, so, so that year went past by. So, two. Three years afterwards, I recall him, hey, hey, China, you want perfect buoy out there. You want an unreal buoy, bro. He was getting mad at it. He was getting salty. Now, you guys all know China can rip. But to think and rip is hard. <laughs> 
So, so I, I'm telling him, come here. I put him on the side. This is what you gotta do. Slow down. This thing, thing. So little by little, by on the fifth year, he started making moves. And wow, I'm impressed, bro. So the, around the sixth, seventh year, seven years, bro. China, seven years. He won the Buffaloes. <laughs> he kicked butt. So I told him, from now on, you can come past Nanakuli, the mom who's gonna let you in. <laughs> He never bothered him ever since. <laughs> but he cried that day like one oh, baby. I gotta feel it right now. Yeah. Uh, Bobo! Bobo! I want to I want to turn this thing over to my two sons. Yeah, that was awesome. Thanks, Dad. Hello my kako. It's a, it's a pleasure to be up here and talk about Uncle China. You know, Uncle China, um, I, these two guys, they would just rip each other so hard as I was growing up. The moments we had um, just watching. Between my Uncle Bruce and my dad bringing me into Waikiki, hanging out with Uncle China, Uncle Gil, uh, you know, seeing the Beach Boys scene back in the early 80s, it was, it was something special because to see it change over time, you realize, you know, it'll never be the same. But Uncle China, you know, nine years old, I did his contests. Um, back then it was the 29 and under division. And uh, it was different, you know, it wasn't as many divisions, but went out there, it was half a foot, so I did really good because I was against all the men on these tiny little waves. You know, Kanoi and uh, Kikoa running around. I remember, like, me and my buddy Ezra just be like, no, I'm going to check out Kanoi, no, I'm going to check out Kanoi. You know, that kind of stuff. We were super young, yeah? We, we talked any kind. And um, and it, it it the thing that Uncle China did was he made he made surfing super fun, and uh, he I I won my first surfboard in that contest because I, I I made the semis and then out of the blue I got this blue Hawaii tiger red stripe tiger rail mini tanker. And you know, back in those days, I mean, I think that was my first brand new board ever. You know, like fresh perspective on longboarding and surfing and, and Uncle Reynolds Wright bouncing around in his Speedos. <laughs> he had an elephant one underneath this other one and all kind of funny stuff, you know? And uh, all oiled up. If you can imagine Uncle Reynolds all oiled up. You know, we all needed him to show us that we could be on the competitive level worldwide. You know, that was what he was showing us, that we have this opportunity to actually represent Hawaii all over the world. Yo. I won this one, I think it was, it was one of our pro contests and I won and it was one of the first times winning. And they were over on uh, Ward over here at a, at a bar. It's like two o'clock, yeah. I called up my dad, yeah, dad, I did good. Hey, come over here, I'm the China guys. So, oh, shoots. So I go over there, two o'clock, feeling like a champ. Walk in there, they got the cigars going, and uh, everything. he's got the crown with the cap gone. So I even partake, right? I'm gonna be a big dog today. Uh, you know, an hour later, I'm in the parking lot, vomiting. <laughs> Thought I was a big dog for about 45 minutes. I, I, I'll close out with this, this epic story. Um, me and my buddy Ez is walking around Waikiki looking for these guys and they were in a, a little bar restaurant underneath the outrigger. And we walk in there and, and you know, Uncle China's talking smack, Dad's talking smack, bang, 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 bang. <laughs> and Dad goes, you know, China, if any of my kids came out looking like you, I would kill them. <laughs> and me and Ez looked at each other like, whoa. Are they laughing, right? So yeah, we laughed too, but that was, 
something as a younger <laughs> watching the level. So I took notes right here. Everybody gave to everybody and made sure that we always knew that we were going to come together once a year at this beautiful contest, see the family and see each other and celebrate him surfing each other. So mahalo no Uncle China, you know, for representing this place, representing these people and forever and ever and ever be in our hearts and a reminder uh, he was aloha so mahalo nui yeah. and then feel off of china um with a little hip hip Hooray! hip hip Hooray! hip hip Hooray! and if you know the song sing along hooray for china Thank you to the Disoro Hana, that's amazing. <laughs> oh, uh, next up, can we get Uncle Craig Sugihara? Okay, I'm the unwilling speaker that <laughs> twisted my arm. This is more scary than getting caught inside an Ali. <laughs> We were friends who rode the waves, the times we spent in our younger days, all oh, the good times that we made. We were young and we were fine, to feel its spirit as it climbs. There's no regrets, only good times. We were friends in younger days, although we went our separate ways. You were my friend, you never turned away. Who can say what life will do? Life is kind to just a few. There's no regrets, only good times. Live your life the way you choose. Find the ones who laugh with you. Like the sea will find its way ashore. As the sun sinks from the sky, live your life and you will find there's no regrets, only good times. Oh, China. From amateur surfer to US champion, then on to pro surfing and ended up as a creator of the best longboard surfing contest that we ever look forward to. Yo! Yeah! And this contest will always give back to the community. We all know that. As we all know, life is full of ups and downs, and China had the full ride. Whether you surfed with him, partied with him, or just knew him, he was a genuine giving person to a fault. To all of us who call him our friend, you know he got your back. To Brother China, we will all miss you. Cheers to you. Thank you. Next up, we'd like to have Megan Godinez, and Jody Clark, and Malia Kaleopa. And he's basically responsible for me being able to see the world through surfing. I got to fundraise um at one of his contests and he matched what i made and then he gave me a free sur a surfboard on top of that to sell for spending money um and that's just who he is so um i will always mahalo him um i'll always be grateful for everything that he has done for um not only the surfing community but for women surfing not just longboarding women surfing um, he basically made a surf contest for us. Um, fun fact, he used to have a bikini contest, right, <laughs> at his event. <laughs> and I was super young. And every year, either Uncle Reynolds used to win, or some <laughs> other big brother, or Malia was a tiny little girl that won the contest. <laughs> so I never realized that a bikini contest was won by like, maybe girls sometimes <laughs> i always thought it was, I was when i went there was another one we went to i was like oh where's all the big uncles where's the big brothers i didn't realize it was like a bikini contest for girls because <laughs> uncle reynolds would always win in his red bikini bottom so uncle china i mahalo you for that <laughs> hi 
Hi, I'm Megan. The man who made the surf contest that gave me all my best friends. They're all around. Um, he was one of the very first ones that saw the potential in my career and let me know it and reminded me all the time and would, be, and would look at me straight in the eye and be like, eh, you better take these girls down. <laughs> okay, I'm only 12, but that's, <laughs> that's <laughs> no pressure at all. You know, just the contest coordinator telling me, take down people. But okay. Um, my very first pro-am comp was at the Waikiki Wahine Classic. And um, it's, it's where it all started, really, where I really met all my best friends who, what, what are we, friends now? I lost track, I don't know. How many years? Don't put my age don't. there. Like, oh, never mind. We're all <laughs> young, young chickens. <laughs> Um, I was 14 years old, I remember winning the pro -Am division that year, and his words were, Megan, the dark horse, I cannot wait to see you take longboarding near and far. 14 years old, I was like, I don't, I don't know why you're calling me a dark horse, I know, I know I'm dark, but I don't know, I don't know what that means. But uh, I, I always remember those words. Um, he gave me an extra thousand dollars for traveling expenses, and at 14, a twenty-five hundred dollars. I was rich. I was ready to take on the world. I was like, "Yeah, you need musubis. I got you. Don't worry." You know. Um, but as, as I got older, it uh, wasn't the money that made me rich. It was the gestures of Uncle China that made me rich. It was the kind words that made me rich. It was his love that he projected out into the community that made all of us rich. Mahalo. also known as Ashley Saxman or the little six-year-old in the leopard print bikini in the bikini contest back in the day. Um, so as I was reflecting on all the memories and moments that we've had with Uncle China over the years, uh, my husband and I can sit for hours and talk about these memories and I can share them with my parents as well as now my children. Um, I had the hardest time settling on one to share with everyone today. Always give back to your community in any way that you can. Support and nurture your friendships because your lifelong friends will be there with you for everything. And he wrote about this in his own obituary, so if this isn't proof that he's living in my mind, um, surf for fun. Winning isn't always the most important thing because sixth place gets the best prizes. <laughs> Mahalo Uimura family for allowing us to share this day with you. Your dad meant so much to us and I hope you all know that. Next up, we have Uncle Butch Pereira. He's gonna give us a closing bullet. Um, I'll start with a story that China told me not that long ago. And uh, I was asking him like, oh, when did you start surfing? And uh, so he was telling me and, and I was telling him, well, what about your first surfboards? And I think in the beginning, he said he was borrowing boards and uh, then, I, then I was like, well, what about your first nice one? And he was saying that, I, I think he, was, he couldn't remember the brand, but he said, and I think it was at Surfline, for the old timers, if you remember down the street, a Surfline. And he said one day he went in there, and then I guess he was like checking out all the boards, and he said he just, he took one off the rack and just acted like that was his and walked out. <laughs> and, and a lot of stuff came out. I was thinking about him and I was going that uh, the word that kind of came in my mind was ambassador. Right? And a lot of guys like a legend, but legend is almost like too confining for who he was. And I think he really was an ambassador of Aloha all over the world, Yo. right? And the Bible says, if any person is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old is passed away and all things made new. So for China, all the things 
that day baptism and what they do is they, they dunk him under, right? In the, the old China, the kind of like part not, not too good, gets drowned, right? And then he comes up. That's the meaning of baptism. When you come up, it's the new China. And, and I got that picture on my phone and he's, the smile is amazing. You know, and his life touched everybody. But we want to think about that with this guy. That he got this many people that are family and friends. Okay, why don't we pray. Lord, we thank you so much for China. And Lord, his life and just what was said today and a little part of this man in the life that he lived. Lord, we ask that you would work in our hearts and make us better. Lord, help us to rise above our situation as he did. Lord, and help us to be as giving as he was. Lord, we thank you that for each person that's come here, Lord, to join in and to be one group in honor of such a great God. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, we have one more guest that wants to say a few words. Um, Bonga, can you please come up? But I think this is a testament to what he did. Look at all of us right now. Um, all the love for the three more family, everyone. But um, when Kiko was 16, um, I talked to his mom. I talked to China. I'm like, okay, let me take your son to Australia. I know you got a huge friend base there, and, and they never met him. They never met Kiko. There's a little thing that I could do is just take this kid with me and, and let him just crush everybody, which he did. He went to Australia. He absolutely served his heart out, and he and it showed. He won everything. He was like the people's champ of Australia at, at that point, man. It was awesome. And everybody knew his dad because another funny story, not another one, but a funny story is he was in Japan one year. And um, Kiko, being the champ, you know, won a bunch of events. Uh, Japan grand champ, but they still didn't figure him out just yet. So we had a final together and he borrowed my board. But before we went out together and, and just faced off, this um, the MC of the event came up to me and he asked me, Oh, Bonga san, I go to Hawaii many times. I do China's contest many times, but I don't know Keiko. And quick question, why do they call China? China, he's Japanese. I'm like, I don't know if I can put it. I don't know if I can, you would understand me if I told you the story with this. Broken, Eng broken English and my broken Japanese, but we started cracking up. And then he also called me, he also asked me like, oh, son, um, I hear you guys talking and why do you call Keiko Taco Neck? <laughs> I'm like, oh, about a long story, but if you want it, you're gonna be on the, on the, it was live, live feed, streaming, streaming around the world, and I'm like, okay, I'll give you one. So, I told Toshi, I'm like, hey Toshi, this is, it's not taco, like Japanese, octopus. He's like, oh, it's like Mexican taco. And so he was all confused. He was like, Mexican taco, yeah, you don't need to eat your taco, you gotta turn your head. And that's why I call him taco man. Oh, okay, I got it, I got it. So, they call us up for the finals. And I get to surf against one of my good friends. He's using my board. The funniest thing throughout the whole event, every time Kid Cohen stood up and caught a wave, oh, taco neck, and the whole beach would just light up. All these Japanese fans would just light up, and it was so funny, and I, and I hope China was watching, because, man, I was laughing in the heat. I could barely surf, so. Long story short, Kid Cohen ended up winning on my board against me, but, you know, at times like that, it, it's, 
you know, comes back to his dad. And I, and I just want to thank him for all those memories and for getting Hawaii surfing to where, where it is today, um, single-handedly. And um, we miss you, we love you, and follow everybody. We'd like to have uh, Kumuhula Lee James Howell. Lee is going to help and go through um, how we're going to close out today's ceremony. We love all your stories that you guys have been telling us, you know, that your spe special memories of my dad, how you met him, how he's touched your lives. All right, I'm just going to share a few words, um, kind of from my perspective about that. Man, this guy's been through the good, the bad, the ugly, and then back around again. I mean, he's been through it all. And, you know, when he went in, when he got, when he fell in a woman, he got hurt. And um, the neighbor's kids found him. I was like, you have like a hundred lives. Because there's so many times throughout his life that something could have happened and he would have been gone a lot earlier. But thanks to Kanoi and uh, Justin and the pastors, they got dad. They introduced him to God, and you know he was able to to forgive a lot of the stuff that might have happened to him in the past and move on from anything that was stressing him out. But the last few days we had with him. Um, more so in the hospital because he was he could still talk then. You know, he was um, he would always tell me when I was it was either me or Kano in the hospital, um, alone with him and he would always tell me, ah, I'm so sorry. You know, he said, I've been such a bad dad. I wasn't there. The thing with dad is is he spoke through his actions. Like you hear a lot of your guys' stories, everyone that came up. Everything is Everything we learn is from actions that we saw him just do naturally. Yeah. And so I wanna, so I was trying to think of what to say, and I was like, okay, we gotta say something. We kinda just say thank you, Zay. I wanna let him know three things. Three things that I learned from him without him actually teaching me. So the first one is he had a lot of friends, obviously. I mean, if you look around, I don't even know how much people is here, but this is probably only maybe half of the people that, you know, would want to be here. Some people are overseas and could not be here. So every time I would travel, any place I would go, Japan, uh, like Bongo was saying, Australia, guys would come up to me, oh, you're China son? I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, nice to meet you. You know, I know your dad, you know, he's such a nice guy, blah, blah, blah. I was like, oh, right on. And after a while, it just, you know, it's just one of those things. Guys come up to you, oh, I know your father. Oh, right on. Like, oh, I know your father. Oh, right on. Like, my parents separated when we were small. So him knowing that we would be with my mom and my grandparents, he'd always say, hey, guys better not screw up because I get plenty of eyes. <laughs> better not do anything wrong because I'm going to find out. And Obviously, looking around here, this guy had plenty eyes on us. <laughs> you know, we got older, we go to the clubs, we go to the bars. Tano Bonsu is telling me, oh, look at my... Oh, you trying to son? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, come here. Don't pay. Oh, hey, run out, check that. <laughs> and the bartenders and the bar waitresses, the waitresses is like, oh, yeah, I might want to listen to that. The amount of friends he had was crazy because this guy is not, by all means, um, He's not rich. He was never rich. Sometimes he might have act like it when he was in the bar buying everybody. <laughs> I don't know how he paid for it. I don't want to know. But I can tell you right now, this guy was not rich. When, when dad passed, I, I told Pana, okay, so we gotta look at, you know, the logistics of things. Okay, how much money did dad get? He's like, oh shit. <laughs> so we got him a bottle of water. And, Thank you. Thank you for coming. <laughs> And that's something that I learned from him is that to be friend rich is way better 
Then be money rich. Okay, the second one is is his loyalty. Um, you know, like some some of the other guys said, you know, he's he had that old school mentality. And to see the loyalty that he had with his friends, you know, we come down here, we grew up over here at the park, he had his uh, longboard club friends, he had his west side friends, his north shore, he had friends all over, you know, and to see him jump at a phone call's notice to go help somebody, or if they needed something, whether it was legal or illegal, he could find it, and he helped them out, you know what I mean? But the loyalty he had between him and his friends um, is something that that I will never forget. And, and the last one is like some people already touched on is he always put other people's first, other people first. Um, you know whether he had if, if he had like um, Uncle Butch said if he had he did you know he would get stuff from from his sponsors if he had them in his van he needed something he'd give them to you. If you needed something and he, he thought you, you deserved it, he would go get it and he would give it to you. And that's something that that I'll always remember. One story that really stuck out in my mind was a friend of his from, from elementary time. Um, I guess they were neighbors living in the same apartment. But he, he said, you know, your dad from day one would walk, walk him because he was smaller, he was younger. He would walk him to school and home from school every day. And he remember dad telling his mom, when the mom asked my dad, oh, you sure you got him? And my dad, he remembers his, my dad telling his mom, no worry, auntie, I got him. Basically, he's gonna watch over him as he goes to school and comes home from school. So that shows me that even from a young age, dad was already watching all the people. Also, another memory I have um, of dad, taking care of his friends was um, when he used to work with um, Uncle Kopi on the movie set, you know, he would, he had the craft service. And then there was one time that 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 one uncle was supposed to come and help out, but he, he didn't show up. And I asked him, I was like, hey, dad, I'm gonna show up, just, just let him go already. Like, in a sense of, I fire him, like, he just came out of jail. He doesn't have anything, you know? So I'm gonna be here for him. He needs, he needs a job, I'm gonna give him a job. And that's kind of what I saw my dad to do time and time again was because of his experiences in the past, he could relate to a lot of people on a different level. And one, I think it was that one of his friends or one of the guys at church asked him, what makes you happy? What makes you the most happy in life? And he said his contest. And so we had already talked about it. We were like, hey, Okay, let's, let's try to bring it back, you know, let's talk about it. You know, we gotta figure out the logistics since a lot of stuff changed. And and then everything happened. So with that said, with that, don't worry, we'll be bringing it back. Yeah. 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 This is what Uncle China did for us. He created one big va'a. And in this va'a, he made sure all these years he had his contest that nobody got hurt. Nobody felt like they was left behind. Um, every, it was an inclusive contest. <laughs> but um, yeah, so we go make his my lele. And then um, as you see the kids, um, his kids and family, Scatter the flowers, you guys can go ahead and scatter yours at the same time.
Bobby can. <laughs> 